Greetings, welcome to the studio. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm delighted to be with uh, Olga um, with Olga this evening, and she she will be giving a workshop directly from her studio, constructing a sonography pinhole camera from a used can, a used drinks can, which is absolutely brilliant. But before we actually make a start, I'd like to cover two things. The first is make a couple of announcements regarding the next talks and the workshops that we're actually, the innovative series of workshops that we'll actually be running on Bodmin Moor. And that will be followed by any questions or comments arising from um, the previous talk, Olga's previous talk. She covered an awful lot of ground and, uh, and she went into a lot of depth and covered a lot of uh, a whole series of different issues and approaches to photography and different techniques that she's actually using. So I'm sure that you'll actually have some questions or comments. And after that, we'll actually start with the workshop, the demonstration itself. Um, again, uh, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, fire away while we're actually um, on during the actual um, live stream itself, during the workshop itself. Don't wait till the end. And I'll actually weave any comments and uh, co uh, questions into our conversation. So feel free to fire away your comments or questions uh, as they come. Cool. Okay. We still have a few people joining us. Good evening. If you'd like to tell us where, where what city, town, country are you actually at um, watching us, viewing the live stream, that would be absolutely great. That would be wonderful. And I'll just set myself up. While I'm doing that, I'll set myself up to actually make the announcements. I'm going to sh be sharing my screen with you. So... There we are, that's our Eventbrite page. Um, and this is next week's talk. This is February the 6th. The talk will be by Anne Russell. She's an artist, photographer, printmaker, um, whose, whose work is really, really interesting. She works in South Devon along the coast and takes different photographs of coastal features, right? Details. And it's a very, very interesting way of representing the landscape. This is a, a, a different type of landscape. Somehow it has more to do with the, with the interior landscape rather than the, the familiar landscapes that we know of South Devon. So do um, book your ticket, your free ticket, um, as soon as you can. That would be absolutely great. Also, another thing about uh, Eventbrite from our page, if you follow, once you register yourself with, with Eventbrite, if you follow our page, you will actually get, as soon as we upload a, a, a talk, you'll actually get the announcement first. So I'm, I'm not going to bombard people with emails because I don't do that. But you will, you will actually get an automated email that uh, alerting you that there's uh, another talk coming up. Following Anne's talk on February the 13th, there's another talk by Carolyn Kennett, Fellow of the Royal Astronomical Society, watching ancient skies above the Hurlers and Tor on Bodmin Moor. Um, what Carolyn is actually, her specialism is uh, archaeoastronomy, in other words, this, this, uh, the, 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 the astronomy that was taking place millennia ago, while in the, during the Neolithic and Bronze Age, so, and looking at the relationship between the stones, circles and stone rows, and the cosmos, the alignment of the stars, sun, moon, sunsets, uh, sunrises, equinoxes, and so on. She's excellent. She's really, really good. She, she's been um, studying, conducting her own research. She writes about her, this subject, and it's really well worth attending this talk because she will go to town looking at these both these sites. Also, on this, uh, on this note, um, Carolyn's <coughs> presentation coincides with our joint efforts at running photography and archaeology, archaeology workshops on Bodmin Moor. The first is on the Sunday 26 and, sorry, Saturday 26 and Sunday 27th of March. It's two days, one night, and it's non-residential, so you can pick your own accommodation. So on the 
Eventbrite page, at the bottom of the page there's a link and that link will take you to the Diorama Days page, right? These are the workshops and holidays that I, that I run across Cornwall and Devon and you'll be able to book your place there. This is the first of a series of events that we've already timetabled, but I haven't made the announcement yet. We've only been working this in the last few days. We decided to actually add a few more. So we'll actually be adding a few more uh, dates to this. But um, so keep your eyes open. I'll actually be making an announcement during in conversation. So I'll keep you updated that way. On another note regarding other landscape photography workshops, on the workshops link, on the workshops page, you'll see a number of workshops that I give across um, Cornwall and Devon. And here I'm choosing um, areas of outstanding natural beauty and natural parks. These are choice, world-class locations where you can actually practice photography. Um, workshops can be one, two or three days. These are non-residential workshops. And if you go to the holidays, I also organize photography holidays. These are residentials and these are staying in three and four star hotels also in, across Devon and Cornwall. At the moment, I've got a number of holidays listed for March, mostly in Dartmoor. But the list will actually be, be growing in, in, in the next couple of, of, of days. So this draws a close to the announcements. Thank you very much. Um, Aksk Akash. Hi. From Manchester. Excellent. That's great. All the way from Manchester. Super. Thank you. And Ingrid. Ingrid. Hello from Sweden. Hello Ingrid. Hope you're well. Good to see you back here. Cool. So, without further ado folks, I'm delighted to introduce you to Olga Suchanova. Good evening Olga. How are you? Hi. Good evening. I'm very well. Thank Excellent. You. Excellent. Tell me, give us a li I've got two questions um, relating um, to your last presentation. One, are you a fan of Andy Warhol? Uh, Andy Warhol, maybe because his roots are from Slovakia, maybe Ye why I am a big fan of him. And I think that he created really revolutionary artworks in screen printing for example yes yeah I, I i do like his work yes because it's interesting because last week i was watching a program on, on on a documentary on andy warhol and of course then when i actually saw his screen prints they had so many echoes with your work 99 sons the sequence the repetition i said ah <laughs> I've seen this before, um, whether influenced, whether or not. But it was interesting. All of a sudden, I saw an echo there, which was absolutely, absolutely cool. Um, Access, thank you for hosting us. No trouble at all. My pleasure. Absolute pleasure. And then he says, Axe, on BBC4. Yes, that's the documentary I'm actually referring to. On BBC4... Um, some time ago, I can't remember, but I, I, I watched it the other day, so that's absolutely cool. So, I think, um, <clears throat> do you have any other questions, folks, to actually, or, or comments that you'd like to make from uh, the presentation last week? Uh, now is the time to, to do it. If not, if not at another time, that would be also fine as well. So, Olga, could you give us a little outline of what your live demo workshop will be about, please? So we will create a camera from a beverage can, which will you, you will position somewhere in your environment and leave to expose for as you wish for one day or one month or three months, one year, it's uh, entirely up to you. Excellent, that's totally, totally cool. Yes, and on that note, I think this is the, the amazing thing that your approach of, to photography, um, 
When you look at the, when photography was invented, the first photograph taken by Niepce, it was an eight hour exposure looking at rooftops of, uh, of his village, of his estate. And it was an eight hour exposure with a single lens camera. Uh, so it wasn't a compound lens like modern lenses today. It was a single, single lens and it was on bitumen so that the bitumen that got exposed to light got hard the other that did not could actually be washed away. And if you kind of look and kind of struggle and look and use a little bit of your imagination, you can say, ah, yes, I can actually see the rooftops now. There they are. And it's interesting because your approach to solography actually doesn't even use a lens right? and, and, and goes beyond the eight hours, right? Goes, goes into, in, in, into months, like you know, forever, forever time, <laughs> ad infinitum. Right, certainly in terms of photography. And it's interesting because really when you, because uh, I taught history of photography for many years, fascinating, fascinating subject. I'm still fascinated by it today. I haven't lost interest. Now, one of the things about the history of photography is that it has been driven by two things. One, the sharpness of the image. Two, the, 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 the exposure time. The exposure time has always been reduced. So that first exposure of um, eight hours, then that moved to a single hours, minutes, seconds, fraction of, fractions of a second. Um, and also the third element is actually stripping away the kind of technical complications, making it easy and democratized. And that really happened with the arrival of 1888 with the box brownie uh, and their slogan, you press the button, we do the rest, because you actually took the films to process and blah, blah, blah. Yet it's interesting that I find that your process actually breaks the rule and it, it's almost taking us to a time that is pre-photography. And with that, I'll say no more because this is your talk, not mine. <laughs> so, I'll hand over the full screen to you, Olga, and uh, make a start when you're ready. Thank you. So hi, everyone. So I will start with the uh, material which you will need to create your own camera. And it is um, any beverage can. I use 330 mil can the best is from aluminium and then you will need uh, some spray paint best maybe some matte not glossy gaffer tape electric tape scissors needle needle you can use any needle or pin doesn't matter whatever you have i will demonstrate how to create a pinhole then the can opener the best ones are this kind of can openers which will create really nice smooth edge so it's not sharp at all and with this can openers you can do it very easily so I would recommend if you want to use a opener, a can opener for solar graphy, it is this kind of opener. Then uh, hair dryer, A4 black paper, 21 centimeter long and so maybe five, four centimeters uh, wide and uh, photographic paper. It's a black and white photographic paper, matte or pearl. I would not recommend to use glossy for beginners. Maybe you can start to use glossy paper if you are more advanced and you know what a glossy photographic paper does inside the pinhole camera. And then for to secure your camera outside, you need some cable ties. So first, what you need to do is open your can with the can opener. As I said, you can open it with this can opener and it will create nice smooth edge. 
The second step is to spray your can from inside in black. So you actually creating dark room and light proof uh, can. So the light doesn't get inside uh, the camera, only through the pinhole. Then take your sprayed can, which is dry from inside. Make sure that it's dry. If you want to be faster, use hair dryer, hair dryer to dry it from inside. Then turn the, your can upside down. Take your paper, cut 21 centimeters uh, long and five centimeters wide and create some notches doesn't matter how many and maybe in half of the paper so around two centimeters long and then just position it around your the top of, of, of the can and take the gaffer tape it's really easy to use gaffer tape. You don't need to use uh, any scissors. You just steer it by hands. There are lines which you can follow and you can just tear it apart and have a nice piece uh, of gaffer tape first just to secure the black paper. Don't tape the can with the paper just the paper so you can move it around and then push down the notches towards to the top so it will close and make sure that it's, that it's almost nice straight then you will get an It seems that we lost a bit of the signal there. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> we're using a Wi-Fi in London. And uh, sorry about this technical glitch. We'll see how we can actually resolve it. Okay. Olga will be coming back very shortly, folks. Sorry for about this little technical dish. Yes, yes, yes. We're we're we're, we're actually we're 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 solving this now. We'll be back with you. Excellent. You're back. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I'm excellent. Sorry, excellent. You. Yeah. It's just that we lost you there. I think the signal went a little bit wavy. You froze, and then but that's okay. So yeah, basically where we got as we got as far as um, putting the gaffer tape and then putting turning the, 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 the things there and then you actually had the little square and that's where we lost you. The square. That. This square mm -hmm. will go on the top of the notches, on the top of the camera, of the pa black paper. Then you take more gaffer tape and tape the top of the paper, not with the can, just this black circle with uh, the black paper so you will reconnect everything and create the top for the camera so in this way you will create the light proof can where is no light getting through then you take more gaffer tape and just make sure that you tape the top properly that the light doesn't get through with no taping with the can just the top i would say that maybe one gaffer tape from one side one from other side 90 degrees and then third uh, 40 degrees
and this way we created light proof cam the next is to make the pinhole on the cam decide where you position your pinhole the best way it is somewhere in the middle of, of uh, the can which uh, if you take it that uh, the light through pinhole travels in, in a wide angle and uh, in 40 degrees so from sides it's like 40 degrees and in the wide angle position which might be around 160 degrees so i would suggest to make the pinhole somewhere in the middle of the can so diagonal maybe in the middle of the can and somewhere which you somewhere where you can remember where is your pinhole and then take your pin and thin could be preferably 90 degrees and just make a little pinhole inside don't worry if you make it smaller or big it doesn't matter if you have a pin the pin is actual size for solar graphy then when you made a pinhole take electric tape these all tapes, gaffer tapes and electric, electric tapes are light proof and waterproof. I just would like to mention also. So the light really doesn't get anywhere just from the pinhole. When you have an electric tape, cut just little piece and one sticky side just fold in the middle. So you will get a one sticky side and one non-sticky side. With the sticky side of that tape just tape it over your shutter over the pinhole which you just created so in this way you already have light proof uh, camera where we now can put the uh, black and white photographic paper i use usually ilford photographic paper small for, for this kind of um, cameras i usually use um, small papers or i just buy the large box and i cut it in uh, into the size you don't need to worry to open your photographic paper for solar graphic on the light because uh, if you are going to take pictures for three months doesn't matter if, if the photographic paper is on the light for few seconds so if you have ready your camera and what what i do with the black paper i cut it down uh, for size for for the pinhole in a dimmed light so it's not so bright and then i try to take to position paper inside quite quickly just make sure that the photographic paper will be positioned in landscape way and opposite the pinhole camera with the photographic emulsion facing pinhole so make just sure that the paper will go this is already exposing you can see that the paper is becoming a little bit uh yellow i don't know if you can see it on this light but i can see that it's already exposing and it's becoming slightly yellow so the photographic emulsion the sticky side of the paper will go opposite the pinhole so just position it in in landscape way like this so the pinhole is in the in that uh, side where is no paper and then take your top from the camera and close it so now you have unexposed pinhole camera the next step is to take more gaffer tape and just tape the top of the camera so the light 
and the water won't get inside the camera. So do you have any questions? Yes, on that note, actually, yes. Um, let me just pull it up. There we are. Ask, what size would you recommend to us as beginners for the can to make life easier? What can size would you recommend, Olga? I think it depends also where would you like to keep your camera. If you want to leave the camera, I would, I would start to expose 330 mil or 750 mil beverage can but in your garden or somewhere where only you or someone who knows can access the space because if you leave 330 mil camera uh, can or 750 mil or 550 mil can outside it might be easily removed so yeah start somewhere or you can easily create your pinhole camera from 330 mil and secure it on your window and i would start maybe from this i would start this way if you never done uh, solar graphic before i think that's a very sound advice because people seeing a can nowadays the first thing they'll think is rubbish and uh, they'll take it away they'll say oh this is a bit of rubbish so they'll throw it away so i think i'd imagine if you're actually doing uh, a number of different if you have a number of cameras on the go <clears throat> to actually uh, include that, that that you might actually that loss you know they'll actually go walkies or something so yeah i think that's very good advice another query what size do you cut the paper Thank you, Ingrid. What size so first, maybe I, I would I would measure my can. That uh, I usually I do it by eye. To be honest, I take the paper in dimmed light outside and try what size of paper I can fit inside. So I would start maybe like uh, I would say. like around maybe 12 centimeters wide and and six centimeters uh no 12 centimeters uh, long and six centimeters wide but i would experiment because for for example 550 mil beverage can seven by five inches paper is uh, exactly exactly fits inside the camera for smaller you need uh, like four by six inches paper which is smaller all you can purchase uh, in uh, silver print which is online photographic store or uh, parallax which is uh, in Brixton, but they they only put, you can purchase uh, material only online at the moment. So you can or if you want to make bigger uh, cameras, you need a bigger paper. So I would recommend to buy a large paper and then just cut it down to size which you need. So after when you gaffer tape the top, you created your own pinhole camera. I have few methods how I uh, position my pinhole camera outside. Because we live on northern uh, hemisphere, the best way is to face pinhole camera south. So it will capture sunrise and sunset at the same time in, in, as, a, as an arc. So it will create arch, arch arcs all over the paper. So, and then 
I would find something quite uh, sturdy, which doesn't move. And first I gaffer tape the can on something. And then I use uh, also cable ties to, to secure it very well. Because if the, in, you know, the can will move, the, the picture inside the can will be slightly blurred. But it, it, it's quite nice effect also. So what I would suggest, just experiment with um, different exposures and pin holes, papers. Sometimes I buy photographic paper on eBay, which is expired, like from 1980s. And uh, every each photographic paper has different quality for solar graphy. And then you leave when you position your camera outside, it, you can leave it for I would recommend to start to do it when, on the springtime until uh, autumn or winter because the sun is getting higher in the winter winter the sun is quite low so just make sure that you position your camera somewhere with the landscape where are not high buildings or buildings uh, from glass so you can have a nice uh, photographic effect uh, of the glass as a, as, a, as a sun trials. So it's just about the experimentation, I think, when you create your own pinhole camera and then wherever you want to put it. My pro for my project, I create uh, pinhole cameras from film canisters where I cut with the scalpel the square and I create a pinhole on aluminium and I uh, tape it from inside. So if you open it, I just tape the, the aluminium, like the square part of uh, from aluminium inside the film canister and then I put cut down the paper for, for this size and I have a small pinhole camera which I can position somewhere where no one can see it because they are usually removed if they are too big on public spaces. Cool, yeah. that's an excellent, excellent. Here just from, from Ingrid, she says, excellent, thank you. So just to recap, the paper size, I think that's really important. And I've got another question from Max coming up shortly. So the paper in effect has to be, doesn't have to go all the way round, but it just has to go part of the way so that in, in effect, the pinhole is actually free to expose, right, on the inside of the can where we actually have the photographic paper and it'll actually go uh, you said about 180 degrees, something like that. So, you, so your 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 uh, your piece of paper has actually to, got to have a gap. It's like an O with a gap. I think that's the first thing. Second thing that comes to mind: pointing south, because then you, if you point your camera, your pinhole camera south, you will actually be able to include because of that angle of view, you'll actually be able to include sunrise and sunset. So now is a good time of the year to actually do a little, a couple of trials, just see what happens, the build, the construction of them. Do some trials, even if it's just for a week, in preparation for spring. So that then, by then you would have actually developed that technique, developed the position, how where to actually put it, and <clears throat> get a long exposure. Um, you know, a seasonal exposure, maybe three months, six months, or, or, or whatever. Um, and here's another question. Applying the logic of 45 degrees of light, <coughs> I'm guessing the paper should occupy three quarters of the inside. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. At least, maybe a little bit more as well. I would say. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think that uh, just make sure that you don't overlay your pinhole. 
So there needs to be the gap between pinhole and paper. This is very important because if you cover your pinhole, there, there won't be image inside uh, on paper because there uh, the light won't get through the pinhole because it will be uh, um, hidden behind the paper. Yeah, you'll block the pinhole. You actually yeah, block exactly. the beam of light. And what you want is the beam to capture the beam exactly. of light. The light create the sunlight creating the beam of light. And that then that, that is what actually creates the, the beautiful trajectories where each line is a day. So, yeah. yeah it will. Cool. Like a laser will create the image inside. Yeah, the light beam will create the picture inside the camera. Totally cool. I love it. Um, so once we ha you've done that, once you've actually built the, 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 the pinhole camera, you've put the paper, you've left it exposing there for a week or three months, what happens next, Olga? Then, before you, you want to take down your camera, first uh, you, uh, gaffer table, use the tape to close. You need to close your shutter before you remove the camera from, from the place. And then I would suggest to use the dimmed light and the scanner for photography. I use Epson scanner and uh, before after you open the can just make sure that paper is dry if the paper is not dry because of the weather conditions use hair dryer and hair dry the paper first and then you just scan the picture inside the computer and that's all you don't use any chemical process or anything you just scan the picture and the picture is scanned in color also and i would suggest maybe I use DPI as high as possible, but sometimes for references, if, if that image, there is no image, I would just use at least 800 DPI to scan the image inside the computer. But sometimes even uh, there is no image on the paper and uh, it's damaged by the water because it was raining too much. It creates a really interesting chemigram inside the camera, which I dry and scan in color and it, it will create, it creates a really nice abstract uh, photographic uh, uh, image. So I would, if you don't get the uh, sun trials on the paper and only some smudges, I would recommend to scan it anyway because uh, it can be something interesting again. You showed a number of chem, how do you call it? Chem, chem trials. Chemigrams. Chemigrams, sorry, chemigrams. Um, you showed some la during your previous talk, the other, last week's talk, and there, there's some really, really interesting, amazing, amazing kind of cosmic sort of images. They seem like an, an, another world. Um, so that's really interesting. Here, another question from Axk. How do you differentiate the sun trails from the moon trails? The moon is not as strong as the sun and it, it, it needs, maybe you need to be somewhere where the moon is as bright as the sun in the night so you can capture uh, the moonlight. But in this kind of uh, weather, as in England, it's very difficult to capture the moonlight. Or what I would suggest in, in the good weather uh, conditions, you need to expose only the moonlight. So you will leave open the shutter only over the night, but it's, it might be quite difficult, I think. But I think it's possible. I there are a few projects where one uh, photographer captured uh, the 
a day of the sun and uh, in, uh, in a, a night, a day with the sun and the moon on one picture. So it is possible. Of course, maybe with a clear, maybe with a full nights of a full moon and a clear sky, if you're lucky, mm. um, then probably you would actually get it. But I think this is the beauty of, of um, and this relates to Olga's presentation last week, the idea of experimentation. There are no rules. You make them up as you go along. You change, you adapt and, oh, see what happens. What happens if I do this or if I do that? And then I think you have to look into that. It's, it's the spirit of adventure. There you, it's, it's not just taking a photograph. This is a voyage of discovery of what happens, what might be. Another question. Um, can last week's talk be seen on YouTube? I didn't come, th it, it didn't come through for me last week. Yes, Ingrid, if you actually use, if you go to the YouTube channel, where you're probably watching it from now, there you'll actually see Olga's talk there. Um, and if not, you use, you use, you use the same link that I sent the invite with. That link should work. So you either go to my YouTube channel, Harry Fricker, and there you'll actually see it listed. Or if in any case you ever miss one of the live streams, if you actually use the link after the live stream, the live stream, once we finish this live stream, it's automatically uploaded to YouTube and Facebook. So once the live stream is over, it's already there ready to, to, to be watched. So you can play, pause, go back and so on and so forth to it in your own time. Cool. And also, if you would like the presentation, I think Harry can email you all presentation. Yes, <clears throat> absolutely. If you, if, 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 you, if you need anything, anything, if you need anything, uh, a link, uh, any questions that you may have, yeah, just contact me. It's no trouble at all. That would be absolutely fine. Thank you, Olga. Oh, um, here, ask. I will have to watch it. I only discovered you this week. Oh, great. Excellent. Well, yeah, absolutely. Do watch it because uh, Olga does uh, cover many of her, all the photographic processes that we've been looking at. Um, she covers them here. Also, if you actually um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, whenever I upload a new program, you'll also be alerted as well. So you can follow me on Eventbrite. You can follow me on YouTube or you can subscribe to... Um, my newsletter again i don't bombard people with newsletters just once a fortnight once a month at most and um, there you'll actually be able to subscribe to the newsletter so going back to the process um, so it's exposed and then it's uh, taken out dried piece of paper dried scanned and from there, you can actually begin to manipulate the colors, the contrast, the hues, bring out all the different, um, the details, really. And the higher your scan, the more, the, the more DPI, the more pixels per inch, the higher your scan resolution, the more details you'll actually bring out, the bigger you'll actually be able to, to print out as well. So if you start with a piece of paper that's... Um, 12 centimeters by five, something like that. You could actually make something that, 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 that that's a panel size that could go on a wall, basically. And then just bear in mind to that you will get a, a negative on photographic paper. So you need to invert uh, the image inside the computer, inside the software like Photoshop. And also, also uh, you need to flip it horizontally. So you will get uh, uh, the image which you, your camera see in reality. I tell you what, just occurred to me, if you do do any tests, 
I'm sure that Olga, and certainly I would definitely, would love to see your, 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 your experiments. Send Absolutely. them over. It would be really, really interesting to actually see that. So, yeah, please do. Cool. Olga, thank you so much. Is there anything, is there anything else? I think uh, just it would be great if someone creates this uh, solar, uh, the cameras for solar graphy and start to expose their environment. It would be great to see the result. And uh, if you can share with us, we will be delightful. Fantastic. Well, that's great. Cool. Any final questions, folks, before we, we, we wrap up here? Olga, thank you so much for this live demo workshop. It's been really, really good. You've covered it. You're so thorough when you actually cover these things. I, I, I feel that I could actually go now and start building right, a, 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 a pinhole camera from what you've presented. I feel confident that, yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. Certainly the, the, the initial one is a test. That would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, question by Axe. Where can we order the film? Is there a link, please? Ah, uh, we haven't got the links. We haven't put the links here. I'll put them on, on YouTube. But you did mention, Olga, a number of um, online shops that you could actually get hold of materials. Do you think you could repeat those and what you could actually get from uh, from sure. them, please? So you, you won't get the film, but black and white photographic paper, you can buy it uh, on Ilford website. They sell or silver print, which is a big uh, photographic company. Uh, they uh, run an uh, online shop or uh, then uh, Parallax Photo Fusion or something like this, which is in Brixton. And they sell uh, their photographic products online to or Amazon. You can uh, just put into uh, go or Google search uh, black and white photographic paper and it can be any kind of photographic paper for dark room and um, oh. any any type or oh, for mapan I use for mapan also very often because I like the quality and it's ah. from oh we've lost all together <clears throat> sorry about that folks We've just lost Olga there. Sorry about that. Yes, I would suggest, I'm not the expert, mind you, but I would suggest, but I've taught photography for many years. Um, I would suggest that you actually buy yourself a sheet of five sheets, a box of five by seven paper. Olga's back. Let me just go here. We'll be side to side. Hello, Olga. Thank you. I was just recommending, Olga, what's, what, do you, you, what, what do you think of this, what I'm about to say? Um, I would suggest people buy paper that is five by seven, five by seven inches or whatever that is in centre, five by seven. So that is the most economical. It's like a postcard size. So that is the most economical. And uh, because then you can, if, if you waste paper, if things go wrong, well, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. It's not going to cost you a fortune. So if you start using five by seven paper, that would be absolutely fine. Uh, and there's many makes. There's uh, Ilford, there's Kodak. Is there Fuma Pam as well, paper? Yes. Excellent. And the places you recommended are Amazon, eBay, or photographic dealers themselves. Did you say silver print? Yes. And the others you mentioned? It's, uh, I think the name is Parallax in Photofusion in London. Parallax in Par Photofusion Par in London. Mm -hmm. Cool. Excellent. Comment from Ingrid. So cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you for, 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 for being here. Your comments are always much, much appreciated. A big thank you for that. Um, Axe, thank you, Olga and Harry, for facilitating this. Absolutely love this. Well, great. Well, hope you to see you next, ne next week again. 
with uh, Anne's presentation and the following week with uh, with Carolyn and the following week I'll be giving a talk on my photography on Bodmin Moor and uh, how that relates to the workshop that we'll be giving so that's absolutely cool. Olga thank you so much this has been gold dust absolute gold dust thank you so much as always you've been so thorough thank you. and so generous with your knowledge and sharing this is um, really really kind of you so thank you so much thank you have a good evening you too i'll say bye for now bye bye terrific well that brings uh, today's in conversation to a close uh, I think that was a smashing, cracking presentation in terms of there's something so elegant, that's so simple, uh, yet the results that can actually be produced with this most simple, simple, simple approach to photography, absolutely cracking, absolutely spectacular. Cool. And on that note, thank you so much for attending the live stream. Hope to see you next week with our next guest speaker, Anne Russell, the photographer printmaker. There's a question. Ask. I forgot to ask. When you cover the pinhole with electrical tape, do you make a pinhole in it or just go? No, you all go. You, you once you actually perforate the, the can, you just put the tape, the, the, the electrical tape on the can so that it's the paper is not exposing so that once you position your um, your can say on a windowsill on a piece of pipe downward pipe on a scaffold or somewhere wherever a tree or whatever then at that point you remove the tape and at, from that point onwards your pinhole camera <clears throat> starts exposing from that moment onwards that was good so it's me excellent Ah, oh, Dragana, there you are. Thanks, Harry. You're very welcome. Thank you, Dragana. I hope you have enjoyed this evening's program. Uh, what we're here next week again, uh, Sunday, 8 p.m. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you then. Have a great week ahead. Thank you so much, folks. Bye for now.